Frank Smith uh, from UCL, uh, talking about fluid body interactions, the impact and skimming. Thank you. Okay, it's a pleasure to uh, be here and give this talk in honor of uh, the old man. <laughs> <laughs> Birthday man, birthday John. Um, this this talk is on um, fluid body interactions in impacts and skimming. We'll go through um, two particular aspects of it: um, the effects of body fluids in mass, increased body mass in mass in the skimming process. And secondly, uh, building in the effects of air interaction between body and water. And in all of these. Uh, Interactions, the, the body is free to move within the fluid, which alters the, the motion which is the actual forcing on the body. So there's a two way action. The, uh, the background or the context of this is, is uh, playful in some, extent, uh, to some extent. We all know about skimming stones across the pond of water, across the, the ocean, across the sea. Uh, it's sometimes called uh, skipping, whoops, skipping. Uh, sometimes ducks and drakes, and sometimes piffing a yoni. <laughs> when I put that up there, I assumed it was a Scottish saying. Australia? It's Australian, isn't it? Yeah. I've never heard of it. <laughs> some Australian man. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's go pick some yonis anyway. Um, yeah. You can see the, um, that's a lovely effect, and so on. It's obviously three dimensional in, in reality. Uh, everything we do will be two-dimensional. Build up a model. There's a more serious um, application, which is to uh, the impact of uh, ice crystals on uh, and other bodies on fuselages or inside engines. So often you have have a, a crystal, an ice crystal coming in of various shapes. They're usually thin. They're coming in, and they either impact straight on the fuselage or in the engine. Um, or they impact upon a, a layer of water, which has been caused by previous hits and melting of the ice. So you get this sort of situation here. Well, this body has come in from the uh, right and uh, has impacted and gouged out this, uh, this uh, trough of um, filled with air, of course, and then it's off skimming along the surface. Juices, uh, also produces a, a, a jet a jet into the air, as shown here. Um, yeah, that, that's uh, so that, that's for a, a body um, hitting water, which is the interest today. There's also a lot of interest in um, separately in the uh, impact of a, a droplet hitting water. Mm -hmm. These beautiful splash events and a lot, a lot of uh, complication. This type of scenario um, brings out a lot of. Uh, Involves a lot of factors: ice, water, air, all impacts, and so on, um, and raises a lot of questions. To think of. Let's let's tackle one or two of those questions. Yeah. So first, first of all, the the effects of thickness. This is uh, some work with uh, Ryan Palmer at Bristol, and uh, here's a sketch of the model. Everything here is is thin. So the, the water, the blue water is, is thin and the, the body is thin as well. We first set up this problem, we assume that the, the, the thickness associated with the underbody, it's only the underbody really of the, of the body that plays a role. Um, the, the typical variation of, in thickness of the body is taken to be comparable with the layer depth. Uh, we then build up the governing equations in this region, uh, the shallow water equations or inviscid boundary layer equations. Um, so we're assuming that the, the depth D2 is small compared with the length of the body, which is taken as one or two. Uh, X is horizontal, Y is vertical. Um, the second step is to, within the shallow water equations, is to assume that D2, this variation in the body thickness is actually small as compared with, um, sorry, that's D1, small compared with the depth of the liquid layer. So, so we have uh, D2 is a lot less than D1, which is a lot less than 1. So given, given that, then we can expand H, the, the layer depth at any time, the U and P and so on. In this form, linearized about the uniform flow of 1 in the 
right with direction. Lynn writes about that with these tilde, tilde functions, small, small perturbations. Uh, we're working in the body frame, so the training edge and the leading edge of the body are fixed at one and I think usually minus one out there. Um, so in that frame, the, the, the air and the, and the liquid, are, uh, which were originally still in the lab frame, are now coming towards us, towards the body with speed one. Uh, we're trying to determine the um, contact point X1 here. Around X1, there's a, a rescaling which introduces the Euler equations, or what is sometimes called an Euler region around this area, which is a small area. And that allows for uh, jumps in the pressure and velocity, but with the Bernoulli property conserved, P plus half rho u squared. Uh, the, fl the flow in this Euler region around here, or around here, is um, it's quasi steady because the time scale is based on the, uh, on the length one. So there's a lot, a lot of notation there. It comes down then to the minimized shallow water equations as shown here, momentum equation. We're trying to determine the pressure P tilde in particular, and also the uh, kinematic condition as, as written here, U tilde is velocity, P is pressure, H is height of water. These two equations apply the uh, wetted region underneath the body. So between X1 and X0, X0 is the trailing edge of the body. Body impacted first at the trailing edge. So we're assuming it's, it stays um, wet there. And then X1 of T is the leading edge of the, is, is the, front, the, the contact point position. It's gonna move forward, left, first of all, and then if skimming, skimming is to take place, it's then gonna move back to X equals one, so the body can leave. Uh, yeah, so X one, the function of T is to be determined. Um, those are the governing equations coupled with uh, these two conditions, which come from Tuck and Dixon's work in the Euler region. Um, and they relate the uh, pressure to the uh, local velocity and likewise velocity to local height. And they introduce the X one by DT, that relative velocity, if you like, this is what produces the nonlinearity in, in the whole system. We've got uh, a quadratic like nonlinearity here and here. Uh, so that's the, that was the fluid motion. Now the body motion gets coupled with that via um, Newton's laws and mass times acceleration is the force. Force is provided by the pressure acting normally under the body. It's much larger than the pressure on top of the body. And uh, the inter integral is from x1 of t, the leading contact as well, well, over the wetted area, x1 to x0. Uh, likewise, the uh, moment angular momentum equation is um, the i theta double dot, theta is the angle of inclination. So the body can go up and down according to h, according to y, and uh, rotate according to theta. And uh, that's driven by the, uh, the, the moment or the torque of the pressure force uh, about the center of mass, X, C, M. Uh, what else? Lots of notation coming at you. Um, M is a scale of mass, I is a scale of moment of pressure, imagine. And uh, we're trying to determine X1 as a function of T, X1, X0 is one, and also determine velocities and pressure. So that, that's the system then. It has to be tackled numerically. Uh, it's, it's very much reduced from uh, the Navier Stokes and Euler equations, but still needs numerical treatment. And here, here are some results um, for a uh, particular, particular type of body. Um, first of all, M, M is three, um, showing X1 as a function of time. And uh, X1, yeah, creeps forward along the body and then goes back to the training edge there, the time of about five. Um, that's first of all with uh, C equals zero. C is a, is a measure of the thickness. It's actually a measure of the curvature of the body, but we can take it to be a measure of the thickness of the body. What happens if we thicken thicken up that body? Again, then a, a gradual reduction in the um, uh, skimming time, as, as shown here. Likewise with M equals six, nine, and twelve, 
see as you increase the mass, the, um, the typical time scale increases, as shown here, and the typical range of x1 increases. In fact, <clears throat> in the case uh, m equals 12 here, um, the solid line shows uh, a case where the where sinking is going to occur. So that this, the contact point initially is at the trailing edge, spreads forward, and then gets to the leading edge of the body. And after that, the fluid, the water is going to go to the top and probably sink, sink the body. If you reduce, sorry, if you increase the thickness of the body, you can prevent that, however. Uh, C is zero, not uh, one, 10, and 100 are shown here. And in every case, there's a, a lessening or reduction of the typical time scale of the, of the skin. And you see similar effects in, say, the, the underbody pressure. Um, increasing mass does one thing. Um, increasing thickness tends to reverse that process through it through. So, um, and in particular, the, the, uh, the time scale is altered and the pressure Pressure tends to be reduced if you if you increase the thickness. Um, the reduction in the weight length that's shown here, and uh, but all, all that then suggests that we should try to analyze this system for um, large mass and thickness and try to determine how they <coughs> how they interplay. When can you ignore ignore the yeah, uh, fairly large mass or uh, or fairly large thickness. The way we tackled this was the other way around, if you like. We first of all took large, took the curvature of C to be large, and then and then after that, it gradually increased the mass factor. See where they interact with each other. So yeah, so here with um, the factor m being order one. Um, and but C, C, the thickness being large, you, you first of all get um, a first stage where uh, it's a very, very short stage where the X scale is order C minus one and the time scales C minus one. So the, the um, movement of the point is, is order one, it's comparable with the uh, flow speed coming on. And uh, expand the solution in this form. And uh, what you get in particular, the blue curve here is the perturbation in X1, the contact point starts at trailing edge where X1 is one, then the perturbation gradually grows and increases like time to the two thirds, scale time to the two thirds. That takes us into stage two, which is most of the skimming process. It's now, a, it's a, a nonlinear stage, but we can convert the system to uh, just z is x1 q x1 is the point scale um, we then get a, a linear system for this function z whatever it is x1 q and put a factor c1 in here which which is dependent on m and i i is a moment of inertia remember we take that to be comparable of the, of the same order as m um, and then this last bit is matching with the previous stage so See the z going like squared means x1 is going back like um, the two thirds. So that this is with m or now we want to increase m to some some power of c presumably, um, and we do that based on based sorry uh, uh, based on this factor c1 here. When m is large, uh, see c1 is going to be small, so it's sort of m over m squared. So, so that guy is getting small. That suggests that the um, the time scale, the dash dash dash, here is going to uh, increase. C one to the minus one third, and uh, that that's what happens. You get um, the scale time scale increasing like m to one third, and uh, then work out x one therefore goes like m to two ninths. Anyway. So a bit of jiggery pokery, you, you get um, this, the critical scaling for the thickness is like m to the two thirds, uh, multiplied by an order one factor c star. Uh, 
So you then substitute that lot into the governing equations and um, come out with a system of uh, three uh, coupled equations for um, y or y naught theta theta naught and uh, x10, which is essentially x1. These three, three equations are coupled together, a nonlinear system of um, integral differential equations. The starting conditions are what we had before. There's a theta of two thirds, this scaled time, and the time is scaled with n to one third, yeah. And x, x1 minus one, that's the wetted region, is of order one because c star here is of order one. So we're wetting uh, perhaps half of the body or even three quarters of the body in this, in this range. And uh, here's a comparison between the full solutions and this sort of asymptotic theory for large mass and um, curvature uh, thickness. And um, yeah, so you can see with the blue, the red, and the yellow curves are what you get from the full system, gradually increasing m 30, 300, 3000 feet. And the, the asymptote for large, asymptotic large values is the dash curve here. This is for C star is five. Similar process for C star is say 500. Um, the, uh, the results tend towards the asymptote. They do it kind of slowly. You know, even at 3000, you've still got a way to go to hit the asymptote. But on the other hand, the, the trend is clear from, uh, say, from M is 30 and even less. You're getting the qualitative quality of the solution. Then there's a third stage, which is a water exit stage. Um, that involves um, um, an extra, an extra um, time scale. There's the M to one third time of exit and then there's a fast a fast scale around exit which you always see in these skimming problems um we can skip over those details and that graph and uh, and really that's it the, ma the main point was to establish this relationship between mass and um thickness now the second the second effort uh with Ellen Jolly, a uh, uh, PhD student at UCL, um, was to build in, in particularly, the effects of air interaction. But we, we usually take the air as a void. Um, how, how good an approximation is that? And also, could we deal with any, any two um, fluids? Okay, so the, the, the model is sketched here. Um, with the body is the white the air or what fluid A is the water or blue fluid um, W. Everything is thin again. Um, so we've got similar equations here and here, and the body motion equations are as before. Um, in the body frame, so we see the air or this fluid coming along with velocity one, left uh, rightwards. And the water also is heading to the right with the same velocity. The differences in the um, densities, rho A and rho W, um, they give us the, the ratio E, which we assume is greater than one. For air and water, that ratio is about a thousand. Um, we're, we're going to deal with um, any any value of E greater than one. Yes. Yeah. So the body, the body is starts somewhere up here. And we're assuming it's heading towards water layer. Water layer will distort between uh, x's, um, like the x is zero or minus one, whatever it is here, the leading edge and the treading edge. Uh, we'll have the shallow water equations in both layers and uh, an Euler region right at the front of the body, which preserves the Bernoulli property. What else have we got? We're, we're assuming that the, the Body mass is large enough that the time scale associated with body motion, so the mass of acceleration equals force. The, the time scale there is longer than the time scale, typical time scale of the fluid motion. So, if this is to work, the, the fluid flow here is quasi steady, which allows a, a lot of, as you can imagine, a lot of um, simplification. Okay, 
Oh, so what else have we got? Um, yeah, we think there's those tensionally viscous effects. Uh, the cutter condition that the body's trailing edge um, zero pressure condition. So just going back to that, we demand zero pressure here at the trailing edge of the body. There's, there's no Y variation in pressure because of the, the uh, thin layer assumption. So the pressure here has got to stay at atmospheric zero, which is the atmospheric pressure, which is zero in there. And that's the same pressure as back here before the jump across the oil region and so on, so on. So what that says is the, is the that uh, thickness of water there is going to stay as one um, throughout, it's still pre-impact. So that, that point will stay as one. The trailing edge of the body can come down um, and that's it. So that's what that sentence is. The, the water height remains fixed at one throughout. The body curve is given by this, so it's a given underbody shape, but moves up and down with H and rotates with uh, angle theta about the center of mass, X equals beta. Having steady motion means you can work out the pressure quite simply um, from Bernoulli and, uh, well, conserving mass and momentum. And so the, the pressure in the, in the air or A fluid, um, this form involves one over the depth, one over the gap thickness squared, F minus F. The notation's bad here, I'm afraid. Um, small F being the underbody sh shape and big F being the water shape. Um, daft. <laughs> so F and F, um, the difference in the F gives us the um, air thickness and the, the function capital F gives us the water air thickness. So um, that's why there's a one over F squared there. So that those are the expressions for the pressures in the air and the water. Uh, and we, we've got equal because the PDY is, uh, is zero. From that, then we can get a uh, relationship between capital F and small f. We assume more or less that small f is given to us at any particular time, it's determined by the body motion. And uh, so this is a quarter equation for the water surface shape, uh, capital F. Once, once we, did, so for a given small f, when, when the body's in a certain position, we can work out capital F, and then go back and work out the pressure in the water and in the air, and then, um, and uh, put those into the mass acceleration forces acting on the body. So that, that will that will then get the, the whole thing moving. Um, also, uh, this quartic tells us that um, for the body to touch the water, or for the, the yeah, for the body to touch the water, the trailing edge must touch first. So, yeah, impact occurs when capital F the water uh, function becomes equal to the body from underbody function F. So left hand side is zero. So therefore F1 must equal one at that stage. And when F1 equals one, you then go working backwards, you have the choice of uh, water shape is the same as the body shape. So F equals F, big F equals small F, or you can have uh, this, this being zero. That gives you that um, F of X, the water height is a constant by e over e minus one to one half. So we've got those two choices and we'll see, we'll look at um, a couple of videos to sort of show, show that, how that works in practice. This one is for a density ratio of two, two mysterious fluids, um, that's the ratio of two. Uh, the blue is the body, underbody, and the uh, red or orange is the water surface. Let's just go back. Um, <clears throat> um, yeah, okay, so, so yeah, body, water surface, and um, as time goes on, the, the water surface distorts and eventually makes itself more the same as the underbody shape just before just before the trailing edge hits the water. 
second stage, the second case has uh, E equals 10, a ratio of 10. And uh, here the, um, see that the, the water surface is much less disturbed as, as the body comes down. Um, it's already disturbed a little bit, so just there. And um, see F equals F, most of, so most of the body will be wetted, uh, but there'll be a, a, a bit at the front, which is not, not wetted. That's when that's when the impact um, happens. So that pre-impact stage stops stops then. So we've got um, f equals f, big f equals small f here. So it's wet. It's all wetted here. And then ahead of that is a region of constant constant height. And work that back to show the constant. Well, the pressure is constant. And um, and the the airflow or other fluid flow in here is uh, effectively zero. So there's an air pocket, if you like, being created here, but no flow. And then th this case is more like uh, air and water. E is a thousand, and uh, let's see what happens. The water layer hardly gets disturbed at the last moment. <clears throat> and that's, that's the impact taking place there. So it's wait waiting, I'm repeating myself, but it's waiting until the trailing edge hits and then this is wetted that stage and then this is this is dry here as a sort of heading for a contact point being at uh, at this position here okay. so we can then move on to the uh, post impact behavior starting from from what we've just seen and uh, what was shown here, similar to what we've seen before, the difference, two differences. One is that the body is thick enough that it, it, uh, it's, it's, it's thickness is comparable with the water layer. So this body could hit the bottom of the water. And secondly, the, the, the air bubble is present, um, but there's no, no flow in the air. We've got fluid coming along, air's coming along here, water's coming along here. And there are two boiler regions involved. Uh, which is a bit crazy. There's one around the contact point which we spoke about before, and that's going to get us from this pressure to that pressure here. Uh, and um, yeah, ahead, ahead of the contact point, we've got um, F is a constant, so that's that that height. Water layer height is roughly constant. So this is an oiler, oiler region around here. Another oiler region is present around the leading edge region. And that has the job of raising the pressure from zero upstream to one half, which is the stagnation pressure of the So that the, um, the airflow that came along here has been washed up, washed up to be above the trailing, the, the leading edge of the body. A backward jet is produced, that jet will interact with the airflow and uh, scoot, scoot around somewhere. Uh, body. Uh, what else is going on? Yeah, this one half is, isn't actually much of a pressure rise because the pressures we're talking about there are uh, proportional to E C ratio, which for air and water, and E is about a thousand. This is the formula we saw before um, involving the water depth, which is now the same as the body depth. This is range. Also, a wake is now produced because the the, the the water surface at this trailing edge point is, is being pushed down. It's no longer the original one value. So we should say, no, I think that's it. Yeah, so um, yeah. I can Dixon tell us what happens across the, um, the water region the contact point. Uh, and it gives this this relationship here between F1, the thickness of the trading edge, water thickness of the trading edge, and F of X1, which is the thickness of the water, the body height at, uh, at um, the unknown point X1. So from this, then we can, we can in the contact point for a given body position, that then is built into the numerical scheme. Um, once we've got X1, we can then work out the lift and the moment and hence move the body 
uh, and then move on, move on a time step and so on. There's also a wake present, but time's moving on. It's a long wake, but it's there. In, in my original uh, PowerPoint, there is a, it's a, um, a video, but I tried it out this morning, it's not working. It starts like that, it's a wonderful video, you should have seen it. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, but I've got, I've got the stills of it, so I'm, yeah, I've only got the stills, I'm afraid. Um, what, what's happening here? The, start, the body starts uh, up here and then impacts. But we see, we see eight, eight impacts before the, um, the skin is, the total skin is, is complete. Um, so it started up here at time 0.016, and uh, it's just hit, hit the um, water here, and you can see the water spread here. There's, there's the contact point. It goes back to the edge, the body takes off again. Then there's a second impact, a slightly different angle. Um, here, uh, a, a rebound. Uh, throughout the, the throughout this motion, the the training ed leading edge and training edge of the body are fixed at uh, x is zero and x equals one, so, and so it goes on. There's, so it's a num number three impact, uh, number four, five, all slightly different. Number six, uh, number seven. Oh, we lost lost track here. Number six, um, number seven, and now here the body is become quite flat um, that means when the impact takes place the 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 contact point whooshes towards the towards the front and uh, that's the end of the story the, the skin total skin is complete I think it will occur um so anyway con the conclusions are uh, just to make the obvious that we've been considering uh, interfacial behavior from the body the <laughs> First, first um, study, um, so small disturbances, but more linear, um, we establish a similarity relationship between mass and thickness. And second, we built in the effects of air and um, managed to get successive skins, all being done within one model. Um, okay, thanks to the usual people, including uh, ICMS. Good.